T.A. Yeomans is the creator of the key line design concept. He was a mining engineer and farmer in Australia and um, was especially prolific in developing his work in the 40s, 50s, 60s. He's written a number of different books on the theme of key line design. And that was kind of his brainchild, basically overlaying the concepts of like engineering and, um, and surveying onto land planning with the primary objectives of creating resilient, drought-proofed and regenerative agricultural systems in Australia. Soil and water management being the foundation. So the scale of permanence is this continuum of characteristics of the land organized by the things that are most permanent or most difficult for us to change and then those things that are most amenable to change and kind of most fluid over a timeline. What's the thing in landing here that we have the least ability to change? It's kind of the most fixed, at least as individuals. What The topography comes, it's very high on the list, but in terms of like the scale permanence, it'd be the climate. And when we're talking about climate, we're specifically looking at things like radiation, you know, how much sunlight is there, how is it distributed? Um, and precipitation. So climate, like we can't change with any degree of direct intention um, as individuals here. So it's something that we're gonna have to respond to. And if we move to our next layer on this scale of permanence, that's where the topography or the landform comes into play. We can't really change the fact that we're on a north facing slope or we're down in a valley bottom or we're on a steep cliff face with shallow exposed bedrock, that's something that we inherit. The further along we get on that continuum, the easier it becomes for us to change, the, least, the less permanent those things are. And so where key line becomes especially relevant in my mind is the fact that because topography is such a fixed characteristic of place, we need to respond to it, or we should respond to it, and we ignore it at our peril. Yet we see that frequently in farm planning or design. In some cases, there really isn't any intentional planning or design. Key key line vocabulary would be that a ridge is any convex landform. So it's any land shape that's gonna tend to shed water. And a valley is any concave landform. And so we have ridges down in the valley bottoms and we've got valleys up along mountain ridges. It's really just about the profile and the shape. Does it shed water or does it receive water? So we've got ridges and valleys on our hands and this would be like the spine of the mountains, you know, or the, we call it the main ridge of the landscape. And then if you open up your fingers and look back on your fingers, you have ridges comprising, you know, the tops of your fingers with valleys, the spaces between your fingers. Just again, ridges, convex shapes, valleys, concave shapes. Um, we would call these primary ridges and primary valleys. And that's basic, the basic construction of the geography of key line. There's a point where the profile of the land shape changes from being more steep and convex to flatter and concave. That's the key point. If you have a true key point, when the land transitions from being steep to flatter, what's gonna happen? What are you gonna see on a contour map that to tells you where that is? Yeah, so it's where the lines move, change from being tight together to further apart. One thing that the key point represents is it's a very efficient place in a valley to, to hold water because if you were to create an earthen dam, in that valley shape, because the landscape is already concave like that, you don't have to move a lot of earth to store a bunch of water relative to a pond up high where you know, the land's flatter or more convex. You have to move a lot more earth. It's like you know, on a flat landscape to build a pond, it's like every shovel full of earth out of the hole is one shovelful equivalent of water stored. So with, with traditional key line design, you identify the key point in the valley and then you lay out a contour line. 
that passes through that line. So that's where you put the first flag and then the rest of the flags are all dictated by that initial starting point. There's sometimes more than one key point in the same field. Um, and so what do you go on when it comes to design? And that's where I tend to bend the rules a little bit because the landscape rarely follows the, the oversimplified examples in the textbook.